Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? This is Enrique Sanchez of Spanish United. Uh, today we have a very special guest. Would you be kind enough to introduce yourself to the audience, please? Hello, Enrique, and hello, Spanish United. My name is Chung Bo. I'm the current mayor of the city of Cerritos. Welcome. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. So, uh, as 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 we spoke on the um, on the email, uh, I wanted to ask you a few questions concerning the city of Cerritos. The first question would be. Uh, how is um, Hispanic relations in terms of um, inclusion in government and in commerce in the city of Cerritos? Well, you know, that's a that's a pretty uh, impressive question and it encompasses a lot. And but here in Cerritos, I'm honored and proud to live here for over 20 some years. And I believe our city is very diverse, not just in the uh, Spanish culture, but in all the cultures that uh, were very diverse. Now, Cerritos prides uh, itself as being one of the most ethnically diverse city of its size in the United States. And uh, if we're just going to focus on this in the Hispanic population, uh, it's nearly 15% of the population here in Cerritos. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, in the city recognizes, and celebrates and, and seeks to increase awareness and understanding of all the various cultures and values that have enriched our community. Um, so, yeah, we've done a lot here in the city. Um, I don't know if you want me to keep on going, but uh, if you want to ask specific questions, but you know, one of the examples that we do to incorporate, uh, you know, our, our commerce, our community uh, and government uh, in general is here at Cerritos. We're lucky to have one of the uh, finest uh, libraries in, in the nation. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've been to the Cerritos library. I've, I've been to the library many times. So it looks like a... Um... It looks like an architectural masterpiece and it looks like a museum in itself. Yes, and not too many uh, libraries have an escalator in it. So some people yeah, think they yeah. them all sometimes. But uh, within that library, there's lots and lots of artwork that uh, probably people aren't even aware how 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 famous they are and also how expensive they are. Um, so we honor, you know, we're very fortunate to have that in our uh, city. But, um, you know, our award-winning Cerritos Library offers Spanish language collections for adults and children. The library has a bilingual staff available to, to, to assist the patrons, and uh, it, it actually presents annual Hispanic Heritage Month programs. Uh, among the programs that we offer uh, there, last year we offer um, family, and you know, I apologize if I'm uh, not saying it with appropriate accent, but I'll try my best. But uh, Lortiria Night. Uh, that's that's, that. that's a lottery night. Yes, but uh, so so basically, uh, from what I understand, it's a, it's a game, um, and uh, we we host that, and then we do the uh, Animal Crossing. Uh, I'll, I'll say lottery since you said it makes it easier for me to say it sure. for kids. And then uh, and maybe you can help me out here is the uh, Dia de los Muertos. Dia de los Muertos. Uh, right yes, with uh, poet uh, uh, Mr. Jose Hernandez Diaz, and then uh, you know we do 3D printing with Sugar Skull Craft Workshop and to represent that as well. So as a city, we uh, you know we try to be very inclusive. We try to be very diverse, and we do a lot uh, for all the cultures. And specifically, if we're focused on that. We do that as well for the Hispanic um, Heritage Month as well. Oh, that's awesome! I think it's very important because uh, I feel that when Hispanics are included, not only in the workforce, but when it comes to uh, community work, uh, culture, and commerce it can uh, create bridges with other communities that may not be exposed to Hispanic people and see them as uh, people that uh, have very similar needs, even though there may be some cultural and racial differences, but, you know, they all have the same as everybody else. And I think, I think it's very important. Like one of the things that we do in Spanish United is that we encourage uh, Hispanics to be involved in community work, to be involved in volunteering, and to be out in the field doing what they can to make to improve the Hispanic uh, community at large, because, um, you know, Hispanics, uh, they get the stereotype that they're insular and that they're not really involved. And it feels very important that as a community that they are proactive. So that way uh, it can dispel any stigma that people may have of Hispanic people, because I think that's very, very important. Well, you know, those are the stigmas that other people have. I don't, I don't have those. Uh, I, I don't have those stereotypes or stigmas. I think uh, the Hispanic culture, the community, and the individuals in that culture are uh, exceptional and, and hardworking. You know, and the city actually has. Uh, we, we when we celebrate the National Hispanic Heritage Month, we actually recognize those type of individuals. And for example, uh, in the past, we recognized uh, California State Assembly Member Sally Havis, who is uh, Hispanic and lives in the city. 
And then we've also recognized uh, David uh, DJ Melody Mendoza of the world famous Beat Junkies who began his DJ career in 99 as a member of the modern uh, DJ group uh, Musique based out of Cerritos. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're aware of that. And then, uh, of course, we've also recognized Cerritos College Board Trustee President Maria Perez. And then, of course, all the various administrators and students from the ABC Unified School District with Hispanic um, uh, backgrounds. So uh, individuals in the Hispanic community have contributed uh, numerously and, 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 uh, and has affected our community. So we recognize that here in the city. Awesome. That's, that's very, very good. And also the, uh, the second question I wanted to ask is um, how, how is the city in terms of, uh, for example, in the terms of homelessness, in terms of poverty, because one thing that we do in Spanish United that we're involved in helping the homeless, helping those that are less fortunate because of, you know, hard times. So as mayor, how would you say, the issue of uh, displaced people and house people is in, in the city. Is it high or not that high compared to other areas? Well, compared to our surrounding cities, uh, the city of Cerritos has a, uh, I would consider a low uh, count for um, uh, unsheltered uh, individuals here in the city. Uh, we recently just had a count and I believe it was under 30. I can't uh, remember the exact number. I want to say 26, but I don't want, I don't want to, to lock myself into that number. Mm -hmm. I believe it was under 30. That's considered, I, for me personally, I consider that as low for uh, compared to the surrounding areas. And, you know, I've actually participated uh, in outreach as well, uh, being elected. I've, you know, during, uh, during times of need, especially during COVID, you know, I myself as, uh, as, a, uh, as mayor pro tem and now mayor, I've been involved in some programs where we did outreach, uh, not so much here in Cerritos, but I've uh, helped uh, uh, groups uh, to go out to LA and other areas to provide, you know, uh, materials, food, and so forth. And you know, that's something that uh, I think it's important to make sure that we we take care of those individuals as well. Here in Cerritos, we're um, we're our numbers are are fairly low compared to other other cities around here. And so we are fortunate that uh, you know our community is in a in a position where we can we can strive to help those who are, are um, unsheltered. And I know our surrounding cities um, may have a little bit more of a harder time to do it, but uh, in, in, for the most part, our, our, we, all, we work really well with the county and the surrounding cities, and uh, we do what we can to help those individuals. That's, that's good. One of the things that I admire about Cerritos, I've been to Cerritos many times, is that it's very clean, it's very organized. Um, I can see that it is like a model city that could be held especially for other areas. And uh, I remember when I was little, uh, and this is way before I even knew of Cerritos, like when I would watch TV, I would remember the Cerrito Auto Square with Jim Varney, the one who played Ernest. So that was, so that was my image when I was for a child for many years was um, Ern, Ernest P. Whirl uh, was in, in the Cerritos Auto Square. <laughs> Yeah, that was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like that was that was my image of Cerritos for a long time. But again, um, I just think that Cerritos has done a very remarkable job in terms of uh, keeping its city clean and neat and, and with low crime. And uh, like I said, I would like to see that model implemented, particularly like in the uh, in the surrounding areas, because I feel that um, you know Cerritos has done a lot of success. And I think that success could be trans transmitted to the, to the other surrounding areas. You know, it's uh, it's interesting you say that because, you know, I was just uh, recently as, as mayor, I, I go to the mayor's conference in D.C. and so forth. And it's funny because some of the cities that they have up and um, to showcase the things that they're doing presently, um, I'm, I'm listening to them and I'm like, we've been doing that for 15, 20 years here already in Cerritos. You know, one of the things that they, one of the city was talking about is art in a public place program. Well, we've had that here for numerous years and here a city um, in America was highlighting their program because they just thought about doing it and recently it's been successful and they're showcasing their program. And I remember thinking, wow, Cerritos, we've been doing this for a while. And to your point, um, you know, Cerritos is a, a model cities and, and not, not just that, not just for the residents here that enjoy it, but local business as well. We are sometimes the flagship city for a lot of the companies 
they would test out their um their, their model here and then if successful then they they branch out to other cities and all over America. One example, and you brought it up, is the Auto Square, the dealership, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our dealerships here are the, considered flagships for their deal, dealers uh, to uh, model across the nation. So they would test it out here in Cerritos. And then if it's successful, then they implement it everywhere else. So um, yeah, so we're fortunate that we, we're centrally located. We have a very strong backing with the local businesses. And the community is very su supportive of us as well. And uh, I agree with you. Um, you know, we're 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 not uh, doing this to keep it to ourselves. You know, any city or any any corporation or anybody that wants to come here and 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 ask questions or you know inquire about how we do what we do, it's not it's not a secret. We would love to share it with everybody. Awesome, awesome. And um, as mayor, how would you how would you, for example? improve the lives of the citizens uh for all for all people you know like what would you do different that your predecessors have have done like what would you do as mayor that would be different well that's 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 a great question every mayor has their term and every mayor has their you know their um their goals and their um their successes and some even their, their failures right mm -hmm. you know when i when i became mayor well when i got elected um i don't know if you know here in cerritos mayors are rotated uh every year mm -hmm. and you get elected as a council member and then your council appoints you as mayor uh when i got elected one of the reasons why i got elected is i felt that the uh, city at the time was not very transparent communication was lacking and residents felt out of touch and uh, I, I made it a point that once I got elected, I wanted to be very clear with those who supported me and those who didn't support me that I would be available to everybody. And so, you know, that's the one thing I think I've done as a mayor and as council is that I'm very accessible. You know, you reached out to me and I responded and here we are talking, right? And that's just, uh, that's the type of uh, mayor I am is that I'm, I'm Chung before I'm mayor. And I tell people all that all the time, you know, my, my I'm Chung before I'm anything else, right? My parents gave me this name before I even got the title of mayor. So I never forget where I'm coming from. I never forget who I am. And I never forget the reason why I ran. So I think for me, what how I do it differently than other mayors is I still am the same individual that I was when I got before I got elected. And I want to make sure I keep the promises that I made. And you know, in my office, I, I have a list of things to do. And as I'm here sitting here talking to you, I'm looking over there and I make this list and I check it off as I go. And there's not too many left on that list, uh, but these are the these are the items that uh, I made uh, promises uh, while I, during my campaign. And you know, I I, I try to keep those promises. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, becoming mayor, becoming elected, you understand there's a lot of red tape too. Of course. So therefore, it you know you know being being a novice, just running for office for the first time, you think you can do everything overnight. But the reality, it does take time. And fortunately for me, I have a great staff here in Cerritos. The community is awesome. And so it allowed me, even though I can't do it overnight, um, I have been successful in many of my uh, many of my promises to the city. And, you know, it's nice that I'm looking at the list and majority of them are checked off and only a few things are left. Awesome. I, I think it's very important to um, at the same time be available to people because one of the reasons why a lot of people have lost faith in the system or just in government in general is that people feel that they're distant from from their representatives, especially from those that claim to represent them. And uh, and again, I really appreciate you taking your time to talk to me because uh, um, you know it's not easy getting a hold of many politicians because for different reasons because they're very busy or whatever. And you know every time I have a chance to speak with an, with an elected official. I always uh, take uh, the time to not only um, speak what I have to say, but also to listen to to their to their side, and at the same time to uh, be transparent because I feel that both sides need to be transparent, both elected officials and the and the public. And at the same time, uh, when people come come to a consensus, they can work together in finding. Um, long-term long-term solutions to short-term problems so i feel that is very important that you know each one is 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 able to be available as, as much as possible and um i was going to ask you forgive me for asking are you a vietnamese background yes i was born in vietnam i uh that is my background and uh, 
you know, when you talk about the diversity of the city, right? And you talk about the Hispanic culture here. Mm -hmm. The the interesting thing is, and I'm sure you're aware of this, certain uh, certain communities, you know, based on your ethnicity and your culture, you you can use that to help you get elected, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, it's reflective of the community. Here, uh, I'm actually proud and honored. Uh, we're not too far away from Little Saigon, which is mm. primarily uh, Vietnamese, right? Yes. But here in Cerritos, we have a very low population of Vietnamese compared to other ethnicities here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm proud to say that uh, regardless of the number of Vietnamese Americans here, um, I still was able to win an election because I truly feel like we represent the the, the whole city, the diversity of the city. And, uh you know, and that that to me is one of my proudest moments is when I was able to get elected in a city that, um, you know, has a very low count of, uh, compared to other uh, ethnicities mm -hmm. when it comes to Vietnamese. But yes, that is my that is my background. And, uh, you know, I'm the first uh, Vietnamese American elected here in the city of Cerritos. And uh, I'm very honored and proud of that. Awesome. Uh, I had I had a meeting not too long ago with the mayor of Westminster, which is Little Saigon. And, Charlie. Uh, yeah, Charlie. Yes, I had a very good conversation with him. And uh, and uh, that's why I, I, I assume they were Vietnamese, because I know the Vietnamese, they have a lot of names that end with V.O. or Nugent or Tran. So, you know, I can I can distinguish between who is Chinese and who's Vietnamese by the uh, last name, because people tend to confuse both groups you know so mm -hmm. you know when i was in college many many years ago when i was in my 20s i had three vietnamese classmates so i learned a lot about vietnam uh, through through them right. and, and i'm uh, sure you had a bowl of pho once in a while too right yes i did <laughs> and uh, i I've, I've also had a lot of uh, vietnamese food that is vegetarian over in site in little saigon so i'm very familiar with the vietnamese community no oh, great that's awesome and uh, yes, another thing I also wanted to ask, um, as far as far as uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as the future of of Cerritos, like what would you like to see in terms of the future of Cerritos uh, in the next couple of years from now? Let's say if, if you're not in office anymore, like what is like your vision for the city of Cerritos in terms of uh, its its future? Well, you know, one of the one of the challenges I had when I became an elected and now a mayor is that I realized, although, like you said, this city on the outside looks very clean, looks very uh, modern and is considered a model city. There's, of course, there's always some some things we can always be better at. Mm -hmm. Cerritos is a you know, you know, we, we can't escape that either. You know, one of the things that we lack is um, we were one of the. Um, the the four uh, forefathers you know were thinking about technology and advancement of just being modern back in the day unfortunately it's you know we kind of lost track of that in the last probably 15 20 years and you know what what i found is that we are kind of behind in technology now so one of the things that i've done is i created what's called the mis committee when i first got elected and that's with mayor pro tem bruce barrels and i along with staff we've done a lot to advance our modern day technology uh, and information and technology systems here and for for many 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 years you know we didn't invest in that infrastructure so my future and my hopes for this city is that we continue to move in that direction and to modernize our city but also be in the forefront of this and not just uh, just catching up but be be one of the the leaders in technology again and one of the things i hope for is that we will have high speed internet uh, which we're looking at right now we recently just uh, remodeled this uh, the council chambers you know and then the stuff that they pulled out of there was probably at least 15 20 years old you know so one of the things i look look forward to um, and hopefully continue is that my future council members whoever they may be continue the path that, to modernize our city technology wise uh, the infrastructure and of course uh, give uh, access of that um, technology to the people of Cerritos and the visitors and the businesses as well so that's the one hope that I have other thing is is, is I hope that the council it will continue to be uh, uh, accessible you know that's that's a big deal to me um, you know when if you ever get an opportunity to really truly get to know me a lot of people here know that you know I'm uh, like I said I'm Chung before I'm anything else and you know, sometimes 
individuals when they get elected they, they lose sight of that right mm-hmm. they lose sight of that and they forget uh why they're there and who who put them there and you know i i remind myself every day to uh never forget how i got here and so i hope that in the future when i'm gone that this office is just as accessible as i'm allowing it right now um you know i have people want to meet me i'm here the doors open if they can't meet me here i'll meet them wherever in mm-hmm. the city um, so, um, like you said, accessibility is important to our constituents and the voters, because the last thing that I want them to feel is that they cannot get in touch with us and they don't have a voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's important to me moving forward. Perfect, perfect. Um, you know, we've already come to the end of, end of our uh, podcast, but I want to tell you, Kem Ung, thank you very much for being on the, on the show. That's one of the first Vietnamese words that I learned was Kem Ung. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> it's close. <laughs> and um, if you want to, like, work with me in the future, like, doing, like, an event or a conference, I'm definitely available to go to the city of Cerritos because I feel that the Hispanic community... Um, well, you know, can definitely work together with uh, the city of Cerritos and, 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 and anything, let it be cultural events, let it be academic, let it be city, you know, that's why we're here. And also for your, uh, for your listeners in Cerritos, for anyone that is interested in making a donation or reaching out to me, uh, we are on social media, we are on Spanish United, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And as soon as I'm done, I will send you the link uh, via email and you can share it where you you ever want to share it with. Well, thank you, Enrique. It was nice meeting you and I appreciate the opportunity to share my thoughts with you and your program and those who uh, watch your program. Uh, You have a great day and, you know, uh, we'll definitely, uh, if you ever need anything from Cerritos, uh, like again, I'm accessible. So just reach out to my staff and and I'm sure they'll let me know and then we can get in touch again. Definitely. Have yourself a wonderful day, Mayor. Okay. Bye-bye, Enrique. Bye-bye.